The Queen Elizabeth class were a class of battleships that represented almost as much of a change in naval technology as the Dreadnought herself. Originally planned as a three-ship class, it almost became a nine-ship class, but ended up as five. But let's start at the very beginning. I hear it's a very good place to start. Battleship design up to the end of the First World War can broadly be divided into three generations. The first generation ships generally had 12-inch guns and a mix of old and new design features. The second generation ships escalated gun calibre and overall ship size, but were more similar in terms of other technology, such as secondary battery engines and turret layout. The Queen Elizabeths represent the start of the third generation. This was primarily characterised by another jump in gun size. For the Royal Navy, this was from 13.5 to 15 inch guns. But they also introduced other advances. They used oil fuel instead of coal, and were designed to achieve 25 knots instead of the usual 21 knots that most battleships of the time were limited to. Additionally, because of the change to oil fuel, the armour had to be made thicker, since coal provided a limited amount of additional protection, and for this reason coal bunkers were often placed behind the main armour belts, but oil would not be able to do this. As a result, they would also be one of the most heavily protected ships of the period, with a 13-inch thick armour belt. They started off as a derivative of the Iron Duke class, which had 13.5-inch guns in five twin turrets. The idea was simply to replace them with 15-inch guns, but the designers realised that if they deleted the amidships, or Q turret, this would save enough space and weight to be able to provide a significantly more powerful set of engines. Because of the sheer size of the 15-inch guns, you would still have a heavier broadside with only 8 guns than the older ship's 10 guns could provide. Coupled with oil fueling, this would make the ships both faster and easier to operate, as you wouldn't have to shovel endless tons of coal, just turn a valve to regulate oil flow. At first, the plan for 1912 called for three battleships and a battlecruiser, but the increased speed meant that it was thought better to simply build four of the same class instead. The Federation of Malay States, which was part of the British Empire, then offered to pay for a fifth, and so to even things out, a sixth was also added. Canada's Naval Aid Bill of 1913 almost ended up paying for another three or derivative designs, but this was defeated in the Canadian Senate. The outbreak of the First World War saw the sixth ship cancelled, as it was thought the war wouldn't last too long and the resources would therefore be better spent completing smaller ships that would be able to be used in the conflict. This left the class standing at five ships. Queen Elizabeth... Warspite, Barham, Valiant, and Malaya. Three the ships carried 14 casement-mounted 6-inch guns, four torpedo tubes, and a handful of anti-aircraft guns. It was soon found that many of the casement guns would flood in moderate seas, and the worst affected were removed and plated over. Many of these guns would go on to arm the M29 class of shore bombardment monitors. The ships finished overweight and could only make about 24 knots in practice, although this was still faster than any other battleship yet built at the time. The class formed the 5th Battle Squadron of the Grand Fleet, and the Queen Elizabeth was detached to help the Allied landings at Gallipoli, where her huge guns were quite effective, although not enough on their own to bring the campaign to a successful conclusion. As she was in refit after this, she missed the Battle of Jutland, but the other four ships were present. They had been temporarily assigned to the battlecruiser fleet from the Grand Fleet to allow the 3rd Battlecruiser Squadron to go to Scapa Flow for gunnery practice. As a result, their own gunnery was still good, although a lot of their potential was wasted as Admiral Beatty did not properly signal to them when he changed course to engage the German battlecruisers, meaning that they spent the first crucial hours of the fight trying to catch up. However, when they did, the difference they made was huge. Admiral Hipper had been winning the fight with the British battlecruisers quite convincingly, as these had disabled many of the safety measures to try and fire faster and make up for a lack of accurate shooting, as their gunnery had been affected by their stay in a smaller port through lack of practice. Although the battlecruisers would still have been vulnerable, it's possible that if they'd all managed to stick together, the Inflexible and Queen Mary may not have been lost. The Germans noted the accurate shooting and huge splashes of the mighty 15-inch shells and bore away towards the high seas fleet. 
Again, through poor signalling, Beatty withdrew on sighting the main German force, but failed to tell the Queen Elizabeths who sailed on, having to turn away under a barrage of fire from every German capital ship in reach. Their heavy armour and speed proved themselves worthwhile because although they were damaged, none of the ships was sunk and they were able to use their superior speed to eventually escape, the Warspite in particular recording 150 separate impacts. Went into an out-of-control circle and had to stop dead for a while, but still made it home and never stopped firing back. Although British shells at the time were somewhat defective and often exploded on impact, a significant amount of damage done to the German fleet was inflicted by the 15-inch guns, four such hits rendering one German battlecruiser completely combat ineffective. After the war, the ships received a series of extensive refits, and several were extensively modernised in the 1930s. Due to the time needed for each procedure, the changes were slightly different each time, and so by the start of the Second World War the five ships were each unique in many ways. Many of the remaining six-inch guns had been taken out and replaced by an ever-increasing anti-aircraft battery, some of them ending up with more than 120 anti-aircraft guns on board. Four would survive the war, with Barham being sunk by German torpedoes in 1941. There'll be two further videos on the class. One will cover the exploit exploits of Queen Elizabeth, Valiant, Barham and Malaya in more detail, and the other, of course, will be devoted to HMS Warspite, since it had one of the finest service records of any warship in history. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.